Hello, I'm John Omler, the Acting Chief Executive of the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority. Today I want to talk with you about the, the, um, the community forum and um, I'm joined by Darren Wright who's been chair of that forum but Darren before bringing you in I just thought I'd, I'd read out what the, the legislation said back in April 2011. Sure. It said that um, uh, under the heading of community forum the minister must arrange for a community forum to be held for the purpose of providing him or her with information or advice in relation to the operation of the Act. The Minister must invite at least 20 persons who are suitably qualified to participate in that forum. The Minister must ensure that the forum meets at least six times a year and the Minister and the Chief Executive must have regard to the information or advice he or she has given by the forum. So that's what it said back in 2011, um, in April. Mm -hmm. You've been the chair of that and um, I'm interested and I'm sure people watching this will be interested in, in just how, how that's all gone. Um, well, it's been an interesting process. For sure. Uh, so the forum was formed, as you know, it said in there that there had to be sort of upwards of 20 people on the forum. Yeah. I think the minister then put out a notice to lots of community groups and lots of other people in the city to say, you know, would you like to be represented on the forum and have you got people, put, got names for it? And my understanding is he got so many and didn't want to cut out any group in the community, so therefore he ended up with actually about 40 people yeah. at, our, at our first meeting. Yes. Um, and whilst that was you know, you know, incredibly representative and really great, I think in hindsight the act was probably better. 20 ended up being a yeah. number that was more manageable. Yeah. Um, and over time, as we had people leave, we didn't replace them because it was just that impossibility of actually mm. um, trying to deal with that many, that many people, yeah. that many broad views. And, and what's, what are the sort of issues that have come before the forum? Um, well, there have been ver lots of issues and very varied. Um, issues, for example, specific issues around the Minister's use of his powers. Yes. Uh, and generally, you know, a a as we know, those powers have generally been ordered by other, asked and requested for by other people. Yes. So lots of times where, for example, WIMAC or Selwyn Council, uh, ECAN have come to the forum uh, and, and told us about how the Minister might, how they want the Minister to use his powers to support yeah. their part of the recovery. Yeah. Uh, lots of the original plans came to the forum, we worked yeah. through those plans and then generally as time's gone on I think we've got to the point whereby very little of the big decisions actually are made by the Minister without having first come to the forum. Yes. So I know, um, you know as time's gone on the Minister has often said to people has this been to the forum or not before yeah. he'll even consider it. So yeah. That's good. And um, so it's, it's said meet at least six times a year but yeah. my, my understanding is it's met slightly more often. Yeah, so early days we thought six times a year wasn't a bad commitment to make yeah. as, a, as, a, um, as a volunteer. Yeah. But it became apparent really quickly that the, the volume of work and the volume of advice that the Minister wanted us to, to consider was just never going to be done. So I think probably by the end of 2011 or into 2012, we moved to uh, the first and third Thursday of every month. Yes. So we were meeting, you know, sort of upwards of about 20 times a year, yes. uh, just to try and get through the volume of yeah. data and the volume of information the minister yeah. wanted advice on. And have, you said there was about 40 to start with and it decreased, but have you had um, turnover and change in the membership over the time? That's probably been one of our biggest challenges, has been around, um, as, as the forum has reduced in number and people have dropped off, a lot dropped off really early, early on to be honest. Um, we've struggled with some representation in certain areas mm. and we've tried to bring new people in over the time but we really, just to be honest, weren't that successful. Mm. Uh, but in later years, certainly through 2015, we brought on three or four new people which really yes. helped yeah. bring the forum board forward. But we've really struggled all the time with, like for example, youth representation. Yes. That, that's been a real challenge to the forum to try and get the youth on board and to keep them mm. engaged and to keep them there. You know, they tend to go through university and once mm. they've done that they move on and yeah. just trying to get new people involved. Yeah. And the, the, um, what other challenges have, has the, the forum faced? Um, well we've obviously um, had, the, had the challenge around trying to renew ourselves but the real challenge I think the forum faced was um, trying to balance out this, this, this ever competing mm. dynamic of uh, you know, progress and actually moving forward at one end of the spectrum and at the other end of the spectrum, you know, very deep, very, you know, very engaged community. Yes. And it was, this, this has been one of the challenges we've faced quite often around us. How do we balance out the, the level of engagement that mm. the Minister might want to do on a certain mm. topic, but actually just needing to get on and make decisions mm. and keep things moving forward? Yeah, well, as I recollect back to um, 2011, the reason that this particular part was put in the Act was about exactly that balance. It was an Act 
to facilitate you know, rapid recovery, yep. but this was one of those um, sort of checks in the Act to make sure the community was involved. And when, you, when you've talked to me a bit about the community forum, um, it is genuinely community representation, yes. or, or not so much representation, just people from the community. It's not sort of business leaders or... Uh, no, so I think, um, well, there's a real mix of people on there. Yeah. There's, um, and, and there's an incredible diverse group of views as well. We have some uh, fairly what I'd call robust conversations yep. uh, across the table. We've got people who represent you know, the central business community who mm -hmm. are um, restaurant owners and business owners in the central city through to myself who is really just a resident of Sumner. Uh, there's lots of people there who are just residents mm -hmm. of certain suburbs. I think it's one of the interesting parts about the concept of the forum and where the forums ended up. I mean, the original concept, I think, that the Minister had in mind was that it would provide this fantastic up and down communication, so directly from the community to the Minister and yeah. from the Minister down to the community. The reality's been, um, and, and by no fault, it's just actually how things have worked yeah. out, the level of confidential information yes. that the forum had to receive so that it could give an informed us give some informed feedback to the mm. Minister, has actually meant that there's been fantastic from the Minister down to the Forum, yeah. and obviously very good from the Forum up to the Minister, but from the Forum being able to pass that information back down to the community has been a real challenge and a frustration for a lot of people on the Forum. Mm. But it was just simply the reality, for example, around some of the, some of the plans that came out, mm. they were confidential, and our advice to the Minister needed to be kept confidential. By the time they were released to the public, as a resident, you couldn't then go and tell your community, oh, by the way, this is what we've been doing because yeah. I've seen it in the press the previous day. Mm. So that's been a challenge, um, but I think it's a challenge that is, it's a necessity of actually mm. having a group of people who have the, the level of information they need is at a confidential level, yes. you know, at the time that they're receiving it. And it's just, it was just the nature of the beast, really. Yes. So you've been there since the start? Uh, yep, uh, all but sort of, I think, three or four of us have been there since the start. Yes. There's about 22 of us yes. in there. Um, Trevor McIntyre was the chair for the, for the initial sort of yes. uh, 12, 12 months, and then I think I took over about 12 or 18 right. months after the start. So, so you've had a fair, a fair go at it. Yeah, to be fair to say, we've all um, we've all committed some significant time, and um, and you know I take my hat off to the forum members who have done that, and and importantly their families who have given up, who have given them up, you know, pretty much every second Thursday evening for the last um, you know coming up five years, yes. and it's been a real challenge for some people who have got small children and had to get babysitters mm. and all sorts of things so that they can get along to yeah. it. Well, I know, um, you know in in the department we really. Um, welcome the advice of the, yep. of the forum, I know the Minister has as well, and um, it's about to, about to conclude. Yes, so tonight is actually our, our, our final, final meeting. Yes. We've attempted to have, I think, three final meetings now, <laughs> but um, each time we think we've wound up, there's a, just one last piece of advice the Minister's wanted, so, yes. but tonight is uh, absolutely our final meeting and we're looking forward to it, mm. actually sort of, you know, ticking it off, having achieved a job well done, I think. Yes. I think one of the biggest successes that we, we've managed to achieve is, is a really subtle success, and it's been around the fact that um, staff, whether they be from ECAN or from CERA or from DPMC or, or whoever they're from, have come to the forum knowing they're going to be challenged on the level of engagement they've done. So it's almost like the existence of the forum itself has created a level of engagement that might not necessarily have been there yeah. um, had they not known that they were going to have to come and present. So, yeah. so quite often it's felt to us like we might have been um, you know, accepting all the stuff mm. that people are bringing to us, but it's by the nature of them having to have come to us yeah. that they've made sure they've got these issues covered so, off. So that's been interesting. Yeah, so the way it was designed within the original Act as one of the checks has actually worked. Uh, yeah, well, I certainly believe it has, and yeah. I think members of the forum would believe it has. Um, yeah. it, it's achieved that, and I think it's been able to give the minister some good advice around where people in the community are at at yeah. certain times in the recovery. It's got rid of a lot of the jargon out of a lot of the documents that comes out. It's continually, continually holding you know Sarah staff, especially to account over the years, saying. You know, I don't understand that piece, so therefore yeah. the people in the community aren't going to understand it, and, and allowed some of that stuff to be to be easier and flow, yeah. flow freer. Well, it's fantastic, and um, thank you for what you've done, and thank the community forum. When you meet with them tonight, you can perhaps tell them you and I have been talking on a on a video that will be on our website, sure. and um, and that um, we really appreciate uh, all the efforts over time. Thanks, John. Thank you. Cheers.